Oh my God, I'm in love with Charlotte Rampling. I just want everyone to know that Charlotte, I'm in love with you. You know I am. The first time someone told me to stop being too worried about what other people thought, I think I felt attacked, I felt uncomfortable, and I felt that it's something I do. Uh, and then I realized it's so tiring and so exhausting because I do believe that if you are a good person and you want good things for others, don't take yourself too seriously. Don't take other people too seriously and have fun. I've given many advice and I've learned to stop giving advice. Funnily enough, the advice that I give is the ones that I have received. And I think I've heard people come to me and worry about these the same issues that I've struggled with. How do I present this? Or how do I do this? So I don't want to do this. To then be able to give the advice to say, just don't do it. Enjoy yourself and be very clear in your communication. Be very straight. I'm ridiculously straight. I'm so blunt that I need to probably chill it a bit. Um, but. When I was young, I was presented with storybook telling by this wonderful author called Astrid Lindgren. Astrid Lindgren wrote a book called Pippi Longstrom. That's her real name, guys. There's no long stocking and Pippi could do anything. Pippi was strong. She was lonely. She was lost, but no one would win over her. And she had freckles. She was my hero. I learned from all of my characters Like now, quite recently, I played May in Reminiscence, who had such strength because she had a belief and she had something she was working towards. Then you have the physical strength of of, um, uh, Ilsa Faust from Mission Impossible. She is, you know, on par with with Tom Cruise's Ethan Hunt, which is amazing. And that is the writer and Tom writing her to that level. The strength of a mother in, in, in... The girl on the train, you know, there's a woman there who's living in a very abusive relationship and the strength for her to be able to break out and tell the truth. The White Queen, I mean, talk about strength, constantly battling for the throne and the safety of your hundred million children that you've had behind the scenes. That's what the women were doing. They were creating alliances like the Bene Gesserits, really. If we compare it to June, creating chaos, but also creating the better good for for the environment, for the system, for the for the grander scale. I can keep on going, guys. I can keep on going. But they all live in me. I don't let them go. I, I bring them out now and then. The worst piece of advice that I was given was because I realized that someone else was doing this. Don't ever blame yourself. Blame others. So I'm trying it out. I'm literally just trying to blame other people. It's just not working, it's not me. I'm far too blunt, far too honest. I could never do it. Have I been blamed for things that I haven't done? Yes, and it happened quite recently. And once again, it comes back to that first question when I said, don't take things too seriously, but it's quite hard to not take things personally when you get blamed for things that you haven't done. But then I come back to it and I think, how can I change it? I can tell my truth and then I move on. And then I confront them always face to face. Um, But it's horrible, it's horrible being blamed for something. What is the new woman? What is the new man? What is society? What is gender neutral? We know all of this. This is such an active, wonderful conversation that we keep on having, which should be, you know, on the forefront. But for me, what I realized with Denny, this was not about hitting one moment of emotion of power. This was about finding the musicality and rhythm between them all. And that's one of the things that I really embrace with this character. She, it's, it's, it's genderless. It is there for a reason and a purpose. When she loves, she loves. When she protects, she protects. And this was not sort of a hard conversation. Denny was, this was his purpose for the film. Generating motion and thought activated from your brilliance and not from your gender, from your gender. I think the sisterhood is such a cool, high order of intelligent chicks. These women who are there to support, protect, create children. That's why we are there as as this group of women. That is what we can do. So when Jessica is dropped down, basically dropped down into the world of Atreides and meeting Jared Leto and falling in love with him, doesn't sort of 
go to the clan, does it? Because she's a concubine. She can't be a wife because that is not her position, which makes for a more interesting story. If everyone could be everything, we don't really have a story. Um, but it frustrated me that she was always hidden somehow behind this veil, that she wasn't allowed into the rooms, that she wasn't allowed, even though she was probably 10 times stronger than all of those men combined. It's like having her on a leash somehow. But that also creates the the interest that creates the dynamic of the consequences. Her decisions create disaster in the universe. Is she right? Is she wrong? We'll find out. I was quite nervous meeting Charlotte because she just comes with greatness and sass. She just stands where she stands. She says what she says. I just find her so cool. If I could become like a tenth of her when I grow up or even now, I'd be the luckiest woman in the world. And then I had Zendaya. This is just where we need to go. It is creating diversity. It is bringing people to the same level. It is not just having superhero men, wonderful guys. We're stepping it up, guys.